Did you know that our food systems are responsible for a third of all greenhouse gas emissions globally? Each part of a food item's journey produces greenhouse gas emissions. Growing, processing, transporting, packaging, consuming, and disposing. Many food and beverage companies are taking action to reduce these emissions to combat climate change. You might have seen some of them use the terms scopes 1, 2, and 3 when reporting on their progress. But what do these terms mean? Let's start by laying the groundwork. To reduce emissions, we first need to understand and measure where they come from. To do that, we can divide greenhouse gases into three categories, or scopes, using a framework called the Greenhouse Gas Protocol. Each scope describes the different kinds of emissions a company creates both in its own operations and in its wider value chain. Scope 1 covers all direct emissions, meaning emissions from sources that are owned or controlled by the company. Scope 2 covers indirect emissions from energy that the company has purchased, such as electricity or steam needed for processing agricultural crops. And Scope 3 covers all other indirect emissions that occur in the company's value chain. These include land use emissions from producing agricultural crops and the transportation of processed foods. For a food and beverage company, the majority of Scope 3 emissions come from agricultural raw materials that it buys from its suppliers. For a chocolate company, this would be cocoa. And for a cereal producer, this could be corn or wheat. Scope 3 emissions often represent the bulk of a company's emissions and offer the greatest opportunity to reduce greenhouse gases. This is especially true in food manufacturing, where Scope 3 often accounts for more than 90% of emissions. But Scope 3 emissions can also be the hardest to address. Companies can replace their vehicles with electric ones or lower the heating in their buildings. But it's much more difficult to set sustainability standards for their suppliers or reduce the significant amount of food waste generated by consumers. So how can food companies tackle these Scope 3 emissions? One place to start is to review their supply chains and start building a low-carbon strategy at each stage. Food companies face a huge challenge in reducing emissions in their value chains, but they don't have to face it alone. The Food Systems Land Use and Restoration Impact Program, or FOLER, is helping make production systems, value chains, and landscapes more sustainable through projects in 27 countries. Learn more about FOLER at FOLER.org.